In this video, I'll walk you through five essential pillars of web security. Authentication and authorization, data security, attack prevention, infrastructure security, and security monitoring. So let's learn these core security concepts that every developer needs to know. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can easily add security to your web apps with ArcJet, this video's sponsor. First up is authentication and authorization, your first and most critical line of defense. Think of authentication as proving who you are and authorization as determining what you're allowed to do. When implementing authentication, you have several options. While you could build your own authentication system, I strongly recommend against it. Instead, consider these approaches. First, leverage established authentication providers. Services like Auth0, Firebase Authentication, or Clerk handle the complex security requirements for you. Second, implement single sign-on with trusted providers. Let users sign in with their Google, GitHub, or Microsoft accounts. This not only improves security, but also enhances user experience. Users trust these platforms, and you benefit from their robust security infrastructure. Now let's talk about authorization. Once you know who someone is, you need to control what they can do. Implement role-based access control to manage permissions effectively. Define clear roles like user, admin, or editor, and assign specific permissions to each role. Always validate permissions on both the client and server side. Never trust client-side checks alone. Here's a simple example of role-based authorization in Node.js. Notice how we check permissions before allowing access to sensitive operations. Let's move on to our second pillar, data security. This isn't just about encryption, it's about protecting data throughout its entire life cycle, from the moment it enters your system until it's deleted. Think about data security in three states, data in transit, data at rest, and data in use. Each state requires different security measures. First, let's talk about data in transit. Always use HTTPS. This is non-negotiable. But beyond that, sensitive data needs additional encryption. When handling sensitive data, like credit card numbers or personal information, always use strong encryption and never store encryption keys in your code use environment variables or a secure key management service next let's talk about data validation every piece of data entering your system needs to be validated and sanitized never trust user input always validate and sanitize data before processing it this includes not just form inputs, but also API parameters, file uploads, and any other data entering your system. Now on to our third pillar, attack prevention. This is where we protect against common web vulnerabilities, like cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and cross-site request forgery. Let's start with cross-site scripting, or XSS. This occurs when attackers inject malicious scripts into your web pages. This code shows how you could prevent it. Always sanitize user input before displaying it. Use established libraries like Sanitize HTML and never directly insert user input into your HTML. Also implement content security policy headers to add an extra layer of protection. SQL injection remains one of the most common attacks. The solution is simple. Never construct SQL queries by concatenating strings. Always use parameterized queries or an ORM like Prisma or SQLize. They handle SQL escaping for you and make your code more maintainable. Cross-site request forgery or CSRF happens when malicious sites trick users into making unwanted requests to your server. This code shows how to prevent it. Implement CSRF tokens in all your forms and state changing API endpoints. Many frameworks include CSRF protection out of the box, so use it. Finally, let's talk about security headers. These are your first line of defense against many common attacks. 
These headers prevent various attacks and should be configured on every production application. Tools like Helmet.js can help you set up these correctly. Let's move on to our fourth pillar, infrastructure security. This is where we protect our applications from abuse and ensure our systems remain stable under load. First up is rate limiting, a crucial defense against abuse and denial of service attacks. Here's one way to implement it. This example applies a token bucket rate limit rule to a route where we identify the user based on their ID. The bucket is configured with a maximum capacity of 10 tokens and refills by five tokens every 10 seconds. Each request consumes five tokens. So this is just one way to implement rate limiting. DDoS protection operates at multiple levels. While you should have cloud-level DDoS protections through services like Cloudflare or AWS Shield, you also need application-level protections. Here's a key tip. Implement graceful degradation. When under heavy load, your application should gradually reduce functionality rather than crash completely. And our final security pillar, security monitoring and response. Having security measures in place is great, but you need to know when they're being tested or breached. Notice how we're logging IP addresses, timestamps, and user agents. This context is important when investigating potential security incidents. Set up real-time monitoring and alerts. You need to know immediately when something suspicious is happening. Remember, security isn't a one-time setup. It's an ongoing process. Keep your dependencies updated, regularly audit your security measures, and stay informed about new threats. Now that we understand these security fundamentals, let me show you how ArcJet can help implement many of these protections with just a few lines of code. Think of it as a security suite that handles multiple protection layers automatically. With just this middleware configuration, we've added multiple layers of protection to our entire application. Let's break down what this gives us. First, the shield protection guards against common attacks like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and other OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. The bot detection is particularly smart. It can distinguish between legitimate bots like Google's crawler and potentially harmful automated traffic. And the rate limiting helps prevent abuse by controlling how many requests each user can make. ArcJet also includes powerful email validation to prevent fake signups and reduce spam. And there's much more, from personal identification detection to advanced rate limiting strategies. All of this is monitored through their dashboard, giving you visibility into security events and potential threats. Remember those five security pillars we discussed? ArcJet helps with many of these out of the box letting you focus on building features while maintaining strong security practices. If you want to try it out, check out ArcJet using the link in the description. You should now be better equipped to secure your web apps. Thanks for watching, and remember to use your code for good.